Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wokey, and I'm ba back with another Fake Grand Order video. It has been a very long time. Uh, there is not much going on in Vago at the moment. <laughs> uh, and I'm going to be talking about what's going to be coming up next. Because they did, uh, just a couple days ago, announce on the NA side, the White Day 2024 event pre-release campaign. Obviously that means that on the lead up to it is going to be the Man's Banner. Uh, which should be... It should, according to this, it should be on the 29th, because that's how it happened on the JP version of the game, is that when this event came out, March 2nd, uh, that's when this started. The only thing is, is that they've been a little bit wonky with their time, so I don't fully expect it to be exactly at that same time. So I figure I may as well talk about it now while there's still time to talk about it and talk about the White Day event itself. And that's going to be today's video. I hope you like it. If you do, feel free to leave a like. Uh, so let's go right into it beforehand, just in case someone's gonna mention it, just in case there is supposed to be an Advanced Quest Part 2 coming up, and we're gonna get something that is the equivalent of this, which is, like, the stream. That's when we'll actually legitimately know that the White Day banner is gonna be coming up pretty soon, because they'll announce a stream coming up. Um, so yeah, let's look right here. So we have the White Day Spectacles. It's actually broken up into, like two parts basically one is the regular white day um thing that they do every year which is where they let us choose a free gift c uh which you can see right here and then the other half is the actual event which i think for the first time no it happened last year this is an actual event time i think it's next year is when there's an actual unit that's new tied to white day because it's typically for a long time it was um returning dudes but then eventually they realized hey a lot of people like our dudes we should make a new dude that'd be a good idea and so they eventually did it but anyway we'll start with white day uh, spectacles so this should be coming this is also known as for us in na the caldea boys collection it should be caldea boy collection 2024 we should get voice cs you will receive a white day spectacles entry badge by logging in use the exchange for one of the nine fully voice cs wait a minute these CDs are voiced? By what? <laughs> I, I, I had not actually heard about that. So you can actually just hear the playback on it? That's great. I had no idea that they did this for the men. What a hilarious thing to just randomly add for the dudes. Uh, that's cool, though. Uh, there'll also be My Room changes, which will be dual My Room servants, where you can have two of them at the same time. So if you want to get the double um altar going i'm trying so hard not to be inappropriate here if you want to join altar and, uh, and coup up and up in the mix together you can totally have that set um you can also change the my backgrounds you can see all the different ones that there will be uh, i assume depending on the day is depending on which one they'll get this is a lot to do for the dudes um twitter gifts i assume that these are going to be the same for us but who knows and then added to the Da Vinci's Workshop will be Merlin's Camelot & Co. Um, outfit. Uh, which is a very nice summer outfit. Which doesn't really seem very summer. But for a man outfit, it will do. It is a very fancy outfit that you can put on uh, your Merlin as he spends time doing Merlin stuff. Um, so yeah, during the login bonus, there will be Stargazers, Teapots that will also be given. Um, for about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8... Eight days will be the login bonus. For seven of them, it will be seven tickets, and uh, it will be one ticket a day, and then one Stargazer pot a day for seven days. And then on the eighth day, that's when you'll get the uh, the Visionary Flames. Uh, also, according to during this event, you'll get a message from Arjuna Altar. So you'll just Arjuna Altar will just show up and say, "Hey, to be fair, they're making a big deal of this because on JP, this is when Arjuna Altar actually came back. We don't get to experience this just because on the uh, NA side, Arjuna Altar came back um, randomly. They jump scared us with returning Arjuna Altar, but on JP, this was the first time he had been back in over two plus years." <laughs> So it was it was a big thing. So of course they're gonna go all out for a Juno altar. That makes the most sense. But I'm surprised about how the level of out that they went for this. So anyway, um, in terms of these, I will look for um, first of all the requirements to actually get them is that you have to have cleared the main quest Fuki Chapter Three Arrow One. 
um, the entry level will know a little bit later. In terms of the actual C, the White Day CEs, we can look at those when we actually look at the banner for the event right here, which I can go in right here, and I can go all the way down. It'll be One Night's Dream, Water Gun Battle, Detective Edmund, The Final Case, Buddy Cop, uh, Chance Meeting Under the Moon, Caldea Express, Ultimate Harmony, Caldea's Delinquent Gang, and The Power Shot. Um... Typically, if you want to mid-max this, you should be picking one of the five CEs. So you can get either the boys playing in water, shooting guns at each other with water gun battle. Or you can get the one night stream, just so you can help. Um, especially because these CEs are going to be used in the actual event, so these will help with um, farming. And all the three CEs you should be able to get just from the friend point banner, uh, if you are that desperate to get all the dudes in there. Um... Though, to be honest, you should probably be saving some of them for Mary Anning, but it's still going to be a bit until the um, Learning with Manga collab, so I think you should be good enough to try your luck there anyway. But keep that in mind if you are going to do the method I said. And then the four C's are also cool. Uh, but in general, I would say that you should pick one of the five to fours that you actually like the art for. Because typically these uh, C's are never very good... <laughs> One night stream is okay. Invincibility two times, then some random MP generation rate up. That's nice. Uh, the ability to ignore defense is actually good, but quick and buster 8% isn't, like, the most great thing. Oh, actually, funny enough, the Detective Edmund, the star, star with stars plus 10, um, that actually can be useful because I've most recently learned, in my, this isn't useful for my specific box just because I have Golden Catches the Carp, um, but apparently Golden Catches the Carp, I forget, not everyone was playing during the exact moment that Golden Catches the Carp was released as a free-to-play <laughs> CE, so not everyone has access to easy 20 stars like me, not everyone has three copies of Golden Catches the Carp at max limit break <laughs> like I do, so something to keep in mind. And again, Buddy Cop and Chance Meeting Under the Sun are all okay. They're all just basically the same as any CEs where really I'm, I'm saying that you should just go for these if you want the arts. Or if you have a specific dude that you love, you should go for that dude. If you just love the combo combination here of what I believe is Merlin and Oberon, then you should get that. You should get them. You should go for it. So that's my only real suggestion on that. Now, let's go into the actual event itself, because I actually have no idea what the event is about. So, actually, let me pause right here. Okay. Uh -huh. So, the event itself, you need to participate, you need to have uh, cleared Fuki. If you want the event's main story, um, the event's main story also contains spoilers for Atlantis. And they actually have a recommended participation requirement which is saying you should beat Lost Belt 4. This is hilarious because I didn't realize, I actually thought that this would be locked to Lost Belt 4 because it's so focused on our Juno Altar. No, they're just saying specifically, we really hope you beat this, but if you have it, you can still play it. But yo, this might spoil a lot of things for you. That's hilarious. But anyway, yeah, that's what it's going to be like. Uh, I guess it's better. Honestly, it's better out than... You can if you if you haven't read the story yet, you can honestly just skip all the story and then read it once you actually finish Atlantis, or when you have cleared Lost Belt. Um, eh, yeah, clear Atlantis, and then you'll be good, and then you can do it. That's much better than the alternative, which is like this is actually locked to Lost Belt um, number five, and you can't participate in it. So that actually makes sense. The event itself, it just is a very basic event. Um, just literally do the main quest stuff and just do the do the new act every new day, do the new free quests unlocked, and you just grind, and that's the event itself. It's nothing like special mechanics, nothing like that. There is mechanics related to some other stuff, but I'll get into that. But yeah, it should be one day to, like, literally every day you'll get a new main quest, and then act you'll start with the opening in Act 1, the next day Act 2, the next day Act 3, the next day Act 4, the next day Act 5, the next day Act 6, and then finally, on the seventh day, that is the final act, and then you'll have an entire week left to finish the event itself if you are behind in anything. In terms of mechanics, you have to repair the, uh, the micro-singularity using the Blessing of Civilization glasses. So this is going to be an event where it's all glasses-focused servants. The event currencies that you're going to get are smart pen, cool binders, and intelligent paper. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a funny thing. Uncover the invisible enemies and the micro-singularity to obtain the Holy Grail. 
equip equipping one night stream doing that will help the drops here so in the event battles master's icon will be with the one wearing glasses as we speckled support npcs during the event support npcs and their speckled uh, costume dresses will be available um so that means that these supports will be there for you so you can have arjuna alter ku alter nemo uh inkidu karna uh, Parcelius, Merlin, Gawain, uh, Saito, uh, Hajime, uh, Oda, Nobukatsu, um, Sanson, Mordred, uh, Medusa, and then it kind of continues on. And it seems like it's just one a day in terms of support NPCs. It's really weird how they do that. Um, I guess it's just so if you want to hang, use them with their glasses in case you don't have them so they can still be registered, maybe? I don't 100% know that, but either way, silly, but okay. Nothing harmful here. Um, unlock costumes. So, after clearing certain quests, you can obtain White Day Spectacles costume unlock tickets. So, every time you clear the main quest, you get, um, I've checked it. If you look for here, you get two through all of them, um, by beating them. Um, you can use these tickets to unlock special costume dresses for Arjuna Alter, Mordred, Enkidu, Karna, Nemo, Merlin, Ku, Alter, Gawain, Saito, Medusa, Parcelius von, uh, Heinhim, I didn't know why I said his full name, Sanson, and Nobukatsu, without spending any materials or QP. So, hold off on it for a bit before you do that. Uh, it's better to do it this way. You still need to own the servants in the first place to unlock the costume dresses, and then you still need to buy them in the unlock permits of the costume dress shop, which you can find uh, right here. So, for Smart Pen, that's where you'll find Arjuna Alters, Student Council President Arjuna, uh, to get Mordred's. This is also under Smart Pen and Browline Frame Unlock Permanent. Um, Camelot Co. Model, that's for Merlin. Oval glasses, I have no idea. <laughs> and then in Cool Binder, it's Arjuna Alter, Stylish Top Rim. They are literally naming the name of the... I Hajime's glasses, I know that one. Some of these, I'm not going to be 100% square with you. I do not know that much about glasses. Reading glasses, the Magnificers, Unlock Permanent, the Brimless Rounds, and the Oda... This is Nobukatsu's. Alright, there you go. That's how you learned it. I thought it would. they would just say the name. I don't know why they're naming the glasses, but okay. Silly. But there you go. That's where you can find them. And you, they'll be at least one, two, three, four, five. Five of them are for the smart pen. Five of them are for the cool binder. And there's four of them for the intelligent paper. So you really should be using these White Day Spectacle Costume Unlock tickets for them. Because this is a lot of material and stuff to use on your things. Especially if you're a newer account. That's a heavy price to pay for them. Um, and you still need to buy the unlock. Form. Yeah, I already mentioned that. unlock tickets obtained March second, twenty twenty two, which would be twenty twenty four or whenever the events start for us, and they go and they last until the end of the event. And then costume dresses unlock permit pr purchase period goes off for at least three weeks, which is one week more than the event usually is. Because in JP, this uh, event lasts till the sixteenth, and then a week later, that's when it went away, like most um, shops do for the most part. Um, there's only been a few handful of cases where I can't think of, of, of a shop immediately leaving as soon as the event ended, and that's usually in the case of a, uh, an event that lasted three weeks. If you don't buy the unlock permanent before the week after the event ends, you won't be able to unlock these costume dresses. So remember to use them right here. These are likely all the ones that will be unlocked. Yeah, that, that would make sense. There you go. So of course on the in the, in the bronze rank that's where they included um Medusa, Parcelis, Sanson, and Nobukatsu. And then in the silver you got some of these ending with Merlin and the other version of Arjuna Alter right here. And then in the gold one, that's where you have a lot of the five stars that aren't Merlin, I assume anyway. Anyway. Um Student Council President Arjuna Alter costume dress. Both glasses and no glasses. So whatever your preference is in this case. Uh, event bonus, like I said, literally any servant that wears glasses will have an event bonus. So keep an eye out for anyone with glasses. Also, all male servants also will get um, a boost. Every single one of them. As long as they have a dude somewhere in the vicinity 
or in theory could be potentially a dude or whatever <laughs> or you had or your your name comes from a long list of space dudes that come that have the name uh, mysterious Ranmaru then you count for the male servants i think it's funny that domen's in here i forgot that domen is a uh gender unknown i believe that is i think uh his thing yeah gen he's a gender unknown all right respect it uh c bonuses i already said that then command code the buddy ring silver um summoning campaign which is the i can look over the event shop first just to go over it like i said the smart pen those are all the the costume dresses right there um you can also get a lore uh, Heart of the Foreign God, a Lamp of the Demon Ceiling, Infinity Gear, and then statues for the Gold Archer, Assassin, and Berserker, along with Golden Foes, and the Buster Code Opener, and a Code Remover. For a cool binder, it's the, the those costumes, along with the the Buddy Ring, uh, Scarab of Wisdom, uh, pay, Forbidden Page, The Stinger of Certain Death, and Silver Versions of the Archer, Assassin, and Berserker statues. Um, along with Golden Foe for, I believe, HP. This is the one it was for HP. The Quick Code Opener and the Code Remover. And then in exchange for the Smart Pen if you want to do that. And then for Intelligence Paper, it is um, the Octuplet Twin Crystals. Um, Void Refuse or Ash, uh, Heroes Proof, one Golden Foe for attack, I believe. The regular status up foes of the silver variety, 20 each, uh, 55 EXP, 104 EX four EXP, 103 EXP, um, Arts Code Opener, and a Code Remover again, and then the Cool Binder Exchange if you want to do that as well. And now... To actually talk about the banner that comes with it, because this is probably the biggest thing for it. There'll be two banners. One will feed. There, that's a lie. There's gonna be a lot more banners. But I'm gonna only focus on the important one, which is actually no. I'm gonna save it for later. I'm actually gonna talk about it later because I just realized Arjuna Alter will probably demand his own video. But in terms of all the dudes that are gonna be summonable during this period, um, it's gonna be Arjuna Alter, and along with a featured uh, Saito. Along with a bunch of other paid up servants that will be very similar to Valentine's Day. It will be all, not all dudes, there's going to be a lot of dudes. It's going to be Kualter, Nemo, Inkidu, uh, Karna, Odysseus, uh, Tesla, Zan Yu, uh, Li Xuan, uh, Taigon Wong, uh, Vlad, uh, Ramses, Oz or Ozymandias, depending on how you want to call him, Napoleon. Uh, Achilles, Waver, Dioscuri, Arjuna, Guy Wen featured, and also uh, Parcellius will always be featured. Oh, I wonder what banner will have Gawain in it, actually. Is he also just featured? That's I guess he's also featured, but not on the same limited rate. I guess they don't consider Gawain a limited rate up unit, but he's a story locked, isn't he? Yeah, that, that's silly, but okay, sure. Um, those will be coming. Along with a Merlin banner focused on Merlin. Just him. Doesn't look like there's anyone else fe featured on it. Not even a four star. Uh, and those are all going to be showing up for this event. Obviously the big one is going to be Arjuna Altar. Which I can actually... You know, I think I have enough time for to talk about this. If he's the only one I'm going to talk about, then he's the only one I'm going to talk about. I'll save the others for another day. Uh, I have a new way of handling it after trying to do the women's one. And I was just like, oh my god, this was such a bad idea. And... <laughs> Did not help anyone other than kill my sanity. But let's talk about Arjuna Alter. Arjuna Alter, uh, he is a limited servant. He is a berserker. He is also known as Deified Arjuna or the Final Dark God. Uh, drawn, of course, by the wonderful Paco. Um, he has one quick, one arts, three buster. This man is the buster gorilla true and through. His active skills are anti-evil, unique EX, increases his own attack for three turns, increases his own damage against enemies with a debuff for three turns, except unremovable debuff. The attack up is 30%, and the debuff damage is 50%. Um, anyone who has a debuff, except for an unremovable debuff, reminder, and the cooldown is 5. Second skill is Clairvoyance Transcendence EX, increases his own critical star absorption of Buster Cards for three turns, charges his own NP gauge. 
6,000 uh, Buster Absorption, and the NP up is 30%, and the cooldown is 5. Third skill is Lamplight of the Soul EX. Grant self gut stats for one time, three turns. Recovers on HP every turn for three turns. 2,000 HP uh, what he, is what he revives with, and HP regen is 2,000 on the cooldown is 7. Passive skills are Madness Enhancement EX and Divinity EX. Uh, third skills an Anti Archer Critical Attack Chance Resistance because trust no one, not even yourself. Even though in this case it's him taking damage, so he can take less damage from him. Um, and his Noble Phantasm, Noble Phantasm is the Rank EX. Oh, I'm not even gonna try this. Uh, I'm gonna try it. Forgive me. Uh, Mahapralaya. The Revolving Sword of the Adjudicates a Reoccurring Destruction. Rank EX, uh, Anti-World, hits five times, deals damage to all enemies. The MP damage is 300% at level 1. And if you get him to MP5, it's 500%. And then he reduces their Buster Resistance for three turns, activates first. The Charge Up is at Charge Level 1, it's 20% to the Buster Resistance. And if you get it all the way to the final Charge Level, that is 60%. And that is Arjuna Alter. On the surface, Arjuna Altar looks very, very simple, and the reason is you don't need a lot of text when you're when the thing that you're fighting is dead, and that is what Arjuna Altar does. Arjuna Altar is a point and kill. There is no unit currently on NA because um, it's a little bit different on JP that is better. Especially on early day, especially early on in the game, that is just a literal point, and they die. Um, I have Arjuna Altar. I use Arjuna Altar. I have never had an issue using Arjuna Altar in any anything because <laughs> he literally just kills. Even the only thing I haven't used him in is challenging challenge quests, and even then, I think I do okay just because he has a guts, which is the one thing that kind of hurts a lot of berserkers. Is that if they don't have a guts, then they likely get crit down and killed. But um, this combined with Koyanskaya being able to return this effectively enough pretty quickly means that he should be able to survive decent enough until the time is there for him to. It, the, the enemy should, in theory, die. Again, I haven't done it myself, but I assume that's how it would go. Um. Yeah, there's really nothing more to say. He is the simplest unit in the entire game. He is death itself. He causes so much destruction, and in such a way that is untold. It, to the point where a lot of people will get on your case, because you have to be very careful when you mention other Berserkers who are very good. Because if you ever say that... Um, they do a lot of damage, or they're the best of this or the best of that. You have to be very careful with it, because they will immediately jump down you and say, um, excuse me, Arjuna Alter exists? And yes, he does exist! <laughs> That's why whenever I have to talk about Morgan, I always have to make the distinction of saying a lot of people on JP really like using Morgan, because she offers a very different, very good way of kind of playing the game that is different than is something that Arjuna Alter is not really doing. Um, so she doesn't do as much damage as him, but she can still have her own team and she can do a lot of good, effective things like that. And the same can be said for a lot of Berserkers, except for poor Raiko. Eventually she gets her buffs, though, on JP, so looking forward to that. But the point is, when Arjuna Altar released, it basically changed the game of everything. It made, um, at that point, who, again, Raiko, who was the best, um, AoE, uh, Berserker at that specific time... When Arjuna released, immediately outdated her. The reason that she got so many buffs is because Arjuna Alter was so good on such an unattainable level to her that it required them to buff her to an insane degree. <laughs> and just to try and make save. You would almost forget that Raiko was as good as she ever was the second Arjuna Alter existed. Just because of how much uh, command of everything he took over. So I feel like no matter what I say, I'll never be able to specifically say how good he is other than i've used him and just by pure using him i can tell you yeah this guy he's the real deal. he's legit he's amazing he's great to own he's a fantastic unit and likely i think a decent number of people would likely be saving him to be fair i haven't heard that many people save enough for arjuna altar so that makes me feel like either they're looking further beyond saying like actually i'm so arts focused that i don't need Arjuna Altar, and I'm going to stick with Arts, and I'm going to go for a Summer Ibuki. 
but I, or, or the more likely case is everyone got Arjun Alter the first time around, so <laughs> they knew that he wasn't going to show up again for two years. So they realized this is my only real shot of getting him, or they got him on the random return banner, which is how I, I think I got him. It's either that or off of GSSR, I don't remember how I got him, but he did just exist for me one day, and it was uh, pretty amazing. And I don't use him that often, just simply because a lot of the times I don't really need that much power to kill everything, but then there are some days where I'm just tired and I'm just like, you know what? I don't really want to deal with this. Arjuna, get out there, kill the thing, and then good. Um, and he does it. And he does it very effectively. Like I said, the fact that this applies first means that this will almost always be active while he's there. So he will almost always, as long as that deep buff is applied, he'll get this. Um, it's pretty good. It's pretty... Uh, yeah, there's nothing really... Ne I wouldn't actually be surprised if there's anyone that would ever have to say anything negative about Arjuna Alter. Because there's just nothing I can really think of. I don't. The only thing that you could ever say negative about him is like I don't know. It's because of his class. Like obviously, yeah, he takes a lot of damage, but that's true of every single berserker in the game. Um, and he's able to kind of mitigate that a little bit with the having guts and stuff like that. But yeah, I can't. Imagine, I can't think of a single scenario where he's just not good in some kind of way. If you're doing uh, Grail Wars. And it's single player fights, he'll be able to kill the enemy before they really ever have a shot at him. And he also has guts, so if anything bad happens, he'll be able to kind of bounce back at that. For farming, he's absolutely amazing. He can take down everything, and if anything was too big for him to handle, you can always switch in Oberon. But a lot of the times, even when I have been using Arjun Alter, Oberon is like overkill. Like, why would I ever need Oberon for the most part? <laughs> he can handle it himself pretty easy with just two bitches. Um... Yeah, he's just really good, and he's worth going for. So if you're going to ask me, like, hey, should I go for him? If you already had plans to go for him, then keep going for him. If you are like, I really like Arjuna Alter, which, to be fair, there are reasons to like Arjuna Alter outside of um, his pure power. I actually really like the costumes and the art for um, Arjuna Alter, because Paco does a fantastic job with this. This is true for regular Arjuna as well, which is what eventually I think won me over for regular Arjuna, is that Arjuna's art is just so um, amazing that it just kind of makes me love the character regardless of anything. Um, and every single form of his looks just amazing, regardless if you want the full-on god form from the Lost Belt, or if you want a little bit closer to um, Arjuna-looking Arjuna. Then you can have that, or you can have a mix of both. To be honest, I think the colors look really well. His noble phantasm kicks ass. There's like everything about him is just like super well designed. I feel like he's a good unit. He looks fun. He's fun to use. Basically, the end all be all. And yeah, so I wish you guys the best of luck if you're going to be going for him. It feels like he should definitely be a unit that's worth kind of going for. I would even say probably for early day um, people who are just kind of playing the game honestly as well. Just. Hmm? Most Berserkers are, really. Yeah, they are. They are. They can definitely be for that. Um, but I also remember on JP, whenever I was playing JP, I would just use a friend Arjuna Alter and then completely invalidate whatever fight I was doing. <laughs> it was just that kind of easy early on. But you can say that by for a lot of units, though. You can say the same thing about Morgan. You can say the same thing about like a lot of five-star Berserkers that are... A little bit newer and stuff like that. Maybe it's not some of the older ones like Nightingale. Like, obviously, you're not using Nightingale and running through Lost Belt um, 1 or something. But either way, I've talked enough. Uh, Arjuna Alter, really good. Wish you the best of luck if you're going for him. If you want my opinion of whether or not you should summon for him, I think he's worth trying for. But if you have units that you care about more, like, obviously, if you don't give a shit about Arjuna Alter at all, then there's no reason for you to be summoning. Then you can kind of skip. Um, even if he is insanely good. Who cares if it's a unit that you don't actually like using or doing stuff like that? Like I said, I have Arjuna Alter, and I really do like Arjuna Alter, but for the most part, I use other units just because I feel like there's not that many reasons for me to use them, because I don't need that much power for the most part, um, except for when I'm just really like sick and tired of everything and just want the event to end, then I'll use them. For this event, I'm going to use the shit out of him, that's for sure, because uh, he's going to have <laughs> the bonus, yeah, so I want to... <laughs> I want to see the numbers go up, so I'm going to be using them for that for sure, 100%. Uh, and that's the end of the video, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. Um, 
I'll be back hopefully with some more videos. Hopefully more. I'm kind of curious if it goes going to do anything in between. I've been debating of just making a... A third Oberon banner. A third Oberon banner is hit. They released that BB banner, which was a BB one. I'm almost debating just like when there's not much stuff to look, especially for how this week is looking. Maybe just recording a video with uh, my brother just talking about Fago for a bit. <laughs> Just to be like, I haven't forgotten that Fago exists. It's just that we're in a weird period of waiting. <laughs> but who knows? For now, that's enough. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Say good I was going to say say goodbye, but can you, if you can hear from there, say goodbye, boy. Goodbye. Peace out.